some of you guys uh, told me about uh, this particular interview over here of um, uh, Prince KB, who's a DJ in South Africa, and uh, which was done by by El Tito. And so I wanted to talk about this interview uh, in the sense of what came out of this interview or the conversation on uh, people's individual journey. As I stated, the interview was done by El Tito. Hits upon hits, multiple songs that are out in the public that you might have heard in the public domain. And so they had this conversation concerning relationship with God and the whole nine jazz. And so I thought that's worth our time right here. It's the reality show, daily Christian commentary videos. If it's the first time over here, be sure check out the other videos that are down in the pinned comments, and I'm gonna check you out over there. Mm -hmm. As you can see, mm, the studio is a little bit, it's a bit different. <laughs> in a different environment and so i'm gonna bring this up right now and let us listen in it was mm. because we are not even talking to each other in the church you know mm. as siblings imagine that Damn. so we go up <clears throat> so the the pastor has to pray i don't know which church you come from so in, mm. our, in our church go up the pastor prays mm. wishes us good luck uh, tells us he leaves these people and so and so wife mm -hmm. and then we go back and sit down um yeah that's 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 the story of my dad damn that's crazy you asked me which church do i belong to i belong to i'm a christian i go to rivers <laughs> i go to rivers church yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I started my journey with with god actually started off last year so mm. i'm a new man when it comes to that basically mm. you know i haven't been that's interesting that's absolutely i didn't know all this. my life i didn't know altido was saved but he says that he's still new to the journey but that is amazing it's amazing uh, to be here and having people who are in the music industry um very well known for their musical influence and and talents and stuff and now we are talking about them realizing the importance of their journey in faith trying to influence people and stuff like that pan africanists everybody looks like it's a sango they are sangoma and stuff and to have a person like el tido who's so influential in the culture to say he's just started his journey and his journey just started like a a, a year ago and so and so the deception of the enemy is going out but at the same time people are still hearing the message of the gospel i'm glad to hear that that's absolutely amazing all right let's go on for Spe speaking of god mm -hmm. um you must read first corinthians 13 okay. when you're done okay yeah is there a reason why should i read that um it's about it's about love and i feel like a lot of people um don't see it for what it is mm -hmm. you know uh, everything else comes but the the most important thing is love and mm -hmm. why i like that that um that book is because or that chapter in the in the bible is because hey we we as people are very self-seeking mm -hmm. you know uh we it's like born again na mama, mm. you know so so it's talking about the see me now culture you know where people are self-endorsing in that in that sense and yeah the bible in the particular chapter he's talking about you know love is this love is this it does talk about a very sacrificial sense of love which is the same narrative that you see when Jesus is talking to Peter and says, Peter, do you love me? Okay, you love me? Feed my flock. Let's, let's not have you make merchandise of them, but feed my flock. And so it's quite an interesting one that he quoted that. But later on in the interview, that was early at about 10 minutes, about nine minutes of the interview. You go in a little bit at about 20 minutes, uh, 50 seconds of the interview, then they got into this part of the interview. Put to God. That's crazy. <laughs> but but yeah. I don't want that to be my brand per yeah. se. My my relationship with God is is shit right now. Yeah. To be honest. So here Prince KP was talking about he's aware. He's aware that his relationship is nowhere where it should be. It could be spoken of in a different light. So he's pretty much aware. That's a that's a good thing. It, it 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 gives us ground for us to have conversation. Now let's go back there uh, and hear how bad is it. 
honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gone, I've gone away from God. It's embarrassing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I don't, I don't want to be that brand. Mm. Why? How? How did that happen? Like you and God having this relationship that you have currently. Um, fame. I I wanted to hear that part when he says I didn't want to be that brand. What exactly what he meant by that? But yeah. Uh, women. Um, too much of self belief, you know. I... Mm. Yeah, he 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 hit it right on the neck. He's aware that uh, self what 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 prizes itself as self confidence has now stolen a place for God. That's interesting. It's very hard to hear for many people. Many people will not admit that. Okay. I, I know I said it's important, mm-hmm. but too much of it mm-hmm. can lead you astray. Mm. Right. So um, there's quite a lot of things that you don't have information of just because of self-belief. You think you can take them on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, sometimes the car is moving too fast. Mm. Right. As a driver, mm. when you're moving very fast, mm-hmm. you don't see, but the passenger sees it. Mm. Right? Yeah. So you need to slow down and be the passenger and just look at your life mm. at, 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 at like how fast you're moving in terms of how you behave, the money, how you spend the money and so forth. So my, And where you spend the money as well. <laughs> my relationship with God, uh, based on the things that I'm telling you now, it has, has gone to, to shits, right? Yeah. And um, bro, I, I, I don't quote the Bible just because someone quoted it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I quote the Bible because I used to live it, mm. right? There's a time I used to stay with, with a guy called um, Tabo. Mm. So my only issue with Tabo, mm. he had so much faith in God, mm. right? My only issue with Tabo, he, he believed God is going to feed him. Mm. Do you understand? So basically, he, there was a period in his life, he was about faith, and then he lived with this person who had unrealistic faith, basically, he would have faith to a point where he was not eating, but expected, you know? <laughs> he would pray and not actually do the uh, work. No, not no, do the no. actual work. Yeah, yeah. That's where, that's where yeah. him and I really um, separated, mm. you know? And that's where some of the questions I used to ask myself <clears throat> separated me from God. Mm. Okay, God, if you are the end all and be all, why don't I have to get everything that I want, you know? Why, why is there certain things in the Bible that contradict, you know, the things that you, you say? Mm-hmm. Or- I'm very interested in hearing what those are. What if other people who are apologists, who are celebrities, who are able to think, but you don't want to go to dodgy people. So do find someone that does reflect the faith properly. You are, you are thinking, you are a celebrity, you have people like Cabello. <laughs> go over there, you might be able to find answers. But... I'm interested in hearing what what were the contradictions that he saw. Because then in this light right now, from what he just spoke about, when he says, why can't I have everything? We would understand that sometimes we ask. The Bible says we ask, but we ask amiss. So th- that's one of the reasons why we don't get everything we ask for. Because God knows what ruin or destruction that thing can present. And so he restricts us from having that access so that we don't destroy it ourselves. The same way a child might want a sweet, but then um, you give them water, you don't give them what they ask for because what they're asking for might actually be destructive. It's almost in the same nature. God knows why. He says you ask, but you ask amiss. So there are people that ask, they, that don't have because they don't ask, but at the same time, there are people that that don't have because they ask, but they ask amiss. So it's it's the same, it's the same group. The question is about asking. Others they are not asking. Others are asking, but they ask amiss from God's uh, part of things. So I'd be interested in hearing that. I'm just answering that one because it's something that he mentioned there a little bit. Or the things that happen in, in life today. You know, um, I'm, I'm also a big believer in science. I love a lot of science. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you can be sick and pray and get cured. Mm-hmm. When you're sick, go to the doctor. Mm. Now, is there nothing wrong with thinking that you, if you're sick, you can go to the doctor? The reason why we pray 
uh, for healing while we are in the hands of the doctor. So it's not that we are praying in spite of medication. It's that we are aware that there is also the sovereign hand of God. We are dealing with humans. There is error and whatnot. And so it's, it's, it's a state of trusting. You know, um, sometimes an example of this, you might be working with a child. A child um, would reflect this faith of why we pray because uh, while you are working with the child, the child is not in danger. But the child just runs and holds your hand. Why does the child do that? A child does that because even though they think they are safe, like earlier on you were saying, too much too much. Um, self-confidence and so a child becomes aware that especially if there's a lot of people moving around them they'll run to you and just hold your hand it gives them surety of where they are going they are with you they see you but they need that assurance that they are safe and so it's pretty much the same we know the doctors can help but then we are aware of the human error that can be involved and then also it's a trusting hand of God that we know is the one that heals. And so that's a thing also to think. But an interesting question either ways. Okay. Right. So there's a balance mm -hmm. of faith and science. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm just caught in between. And also um, there's, there's a verse in the Bible. You must be like a child when you come to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know you was going to say. I haven't watched it. <laughs> the interview and so that's exactly what i was just explained all right mm -hmm. right a child does what a child doesn't know and doesn't care you can slap them now after an hour they forgot mm -hmm. what you did to them mm -hmm. so there's a you, you must be naive a bit about certain things in the bible i don't think it's not naive okay. i think it's faith it's, yeah for you to have faith you must be naive let's be mm. no it's not being naive. It's being informed that I know he is sovereign. I know he knows the outcome. And so it's me trusting that the same way I gave the example of a father and thing. But I'm not going to play any more of the video just so that uh, if you want to watch the video and the rest of the conversation, it's going to be on El Tido's interview thingy uh, on his YouTube channel. I'll leave the video down in the description. But hey. These answers are there. You just have to ask the right people. Sometimes we have these conversations uh, when we are in that position with the wrong people. Or we ask people that don't have the answers, right? And so it doesn't get anywhere. It just, it just feels like there, there's no answers, you know? You kind of come to a place where you, you're like Elijah. You feel like you're the only one. who, <laughs> well, as, uh, he says, no, you don't, you're not the only one who's left. There's 7,000 other people uh, who have not bowed themselves to, the, to, to Baal. And so he's asking questions. I think that's a good thing. That's why I'm saying the word is spreading. As deception spreads to others, those that are seeking of the truth are, are thinking. I do wish them absolutely well in their journey of finding these particular answers and stuff like that. The answers are out there as long as you are looking in the right place. Y'all tell me your thoughts down in the comment section. It's the Rikshu Yadid Show. The daily Christian commentary videos. I absolutely like his awareness uh, of, of the state of error. When he stays there, you know, too much confidence can bring one to a place where, you know, I thought that was quite an interesting one. Y'all tell me your thoughts down in the comment section. And I'll see you on the next episode.